I find myself on the beautiful Isle of Wight as part of my quest to cover all of Britain's railways. I'm starting here at Wright Pierhead. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode one of Branch Lines. Yes folks, welcome to the Ben Walker channel and welcome to Branch Lights, the series in which I discover all the minor rail routes up and down the country to see which ones you guys at home should visit. Now I do apologise, this is my first ever video that I'm making, so I do apologise if some of the camera angles are a bit funny or if we're a little bit out of focus. This is something that I'm working on for future episodes and I do hope you'll tune in to see me again. Opening in 1880, the Island Line operates on the east side of the Isle of Wight, serving eight stations between Ride Pierhead and Shanklin. The island has a fleet of Class 484s, once used on the London Underground's District Line. My first step was to ride the line in its entirety to Shanklin to discover something a little bit special. Now there were two reasons that I wanted to come back to Shanklin. Uh, well, number one, I didn't think I'd actually been here before, but I realised pretty quickly as soon as I got off the train that actually I have been here before. And I've walked up to Lake Station, which I always confuse with Sandown. I always think Sandown is Lake. And I'd forgotten that Lake had even existed when I was looking back. But the other reason was for where I'm going now. The railway actually used to extend on down to Ventnor. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm sure if you're from the Isle of Wight and you know the actual way of saying it, you'll correct me in the comments. It used to extend down to Ventnor and they built this new road which takes you down there and it follows along what used to be the rest of the island line. This path forms what is now known as the Red Squirrel Trail. So I'll be on the lookout for some red squirrels, but it's pretty obvious what it once was. The path doesn't extend all the way to Ventnor anymore. Uh, they build a hotel in the bit between the town I'm walking to and Ventnor, but it does extend to Roxall. Now I might be saying that wrong again. Um, you, <laughs> correct me in the comments if I, ha if I am mispronouncing it. But this path goes down to Roxall, the Red Squirrel Trail, two and a half miles from Shanklin Station down to Roxall. Now according to Google Maps, coming up somewhere on the right hand side, there's a place, uh, well there's someone who owns two deer. They're apparently very friendly and you sort of feed them carrots and apples and stuff. Now I didn't think to pick up any carrots or apples for them. But if we see them that would be quite good. I've found the deer. I mean it's right next to what in the summer months must be a uh, cafe that's open. Now clearly this is a very popular walking spot for tourists. But the deer are just over there behind that fence. I'll put some clips of them up on your screen now. They're called Fleur and Donnie and there's a rather amusing sign which says please do not leave your bikes on the fence as Fleur and Donnie have been known to eat them. There was a woman coming past who feeds them most mornings and she did try and call them over for me but uh, they've eaten already. They're chilling out now for the rest of the day. I don't blame them. It's nice weather. Really nice walk actually. One thing I would say is because we are in sort of a path with an incline on either side, naturally, as uh, railways often do. It can get quite wet and muddy. Uh, I mean, I have been trying to avoid the puddles, obviously, but my feet are a little bit wet. There's been a lot of dogs running past, very friendly, a few a bit jumpy. I've now got mud on my crotch where, <laughs> where this dog got a bit excited and, uh, and did jump at me. But hey ho, it's part of... Uh, part of walking this sort of route I suppose. Even in the summer months I would highly recommend a pair of walking boots so I've come in trainers that was a mistake. Still not found a bench as well if you were sort of looking to stop frequently or take it really slow it's not very easy to do that. It is just a two and a half mile walk just a long stretch round to Roxall really. 
Not seen any red squirrels yet either. I think it was a bit of an optimistic name for the path. What I have seen though is a lot of horse crap. This of course isn't the only abandoned railway on the Isle of Wight. There were also the Freshwater Yarmouth and Newport Railway, which sort of operated on the west side of the island. Then you had the Isle of Wight Central Railway, which linked cows to Newport, and then also Newport out to Ventnor, where this one used to go. Uh, there was also a link to Sandown, through the sort of centre of the island, and then there was the line over towards Smallbrook Junction, which is obviously where the steam trains now operate in the summer. Of course, Smallbrook Junction Station doesn't usually get a service this time of year. There was also an extension off this line up to a town that I can't remember, but I'm sure in a voiceover I will talk about it. And that sort of came off at, um, at uh, Braiding. Came off at Braiding and went up to I can't remember. Right, I'm heading back towards Shanklin now. I didn't get all the way to Roxall on this occasion, nor did I see any red squirrels, so I'm not sure why it's called the Red Squirrel Trail. Oh, well, that's hard to say. The Red Squirrel Trail. Uh, maybe it's the wrong time of year for it. Or maybe because I'm talking on a camera, they're hiding from me. But either way, didn't see any. I'd recommend it though, it's a lovely little walk. Um, I would wear a pair of walking boots or old trainers. And in the summer, I bet it gets especially busy. I would look out for horses, bikes, etc. And do bear in mind, there aren't a lot of benches. There is that spot about halfway down where the deer were. Where in the summer, there's clearly a cafe. But um, yeah, this sort of time of year, sort of early spring, we're just sort of coming in towards the hotter weather. Yeah, if you want to stop route frequently, there's not really anywhere to do that. But do bear that in mind, but I would come and visit. Oh, where can we in the tunnel? Look at that. Well, the end of a long walk on a sunny day, folks. You know what time it is. I just had a superb pub lunch in the town of Shanklin. Sort of had a focaccia with pesto, salami, and basil, and then a couple of pints to go with it. And, um, and some chips as well on the side. Decided to now walk to Lake, get in the sea view, and pick up the tube, not I say the tube, pick up the island line from there. I want to do this series of exploring all of Britain's railway it's just to see how much beauty there is because I know that there's so many amazing parts of the UK that are accessible by rail and the Isle of Wight is truly no exception <laughs> like it's this little island off the coast of the south of the UK and yet there is just so much beauty to it I think there's just so many things that if you were insisting on holidaying with your car the Isle of Wight perhaps wouldn't be one of the places you'd think of coming. Like it's a 45 minute ferry crossing and then you've got to drive somewhere and it's really expensive to stay. But if you come by train, it's so easy. Portsmouth Harbour, £13 is an adult ticket from Waterloo down to Portsmouth. 13 quid and that's the night before. You come down, it's then a really quick ferry crossing or hovercraft, which we're going to explore in another video. Um, it's just so easy to get to. And you come down on the train, come down to Shanklin, and then you walk, you go on some of these walks, you go to some of these pubs that you might not have explored had you come in your car. And the Isle of Wight is one of my favorite places. It genuinely is. And uh, just to have a couple of days off to come and explore is just, it's just fantastic. And what a great way to start this series. series is discuss the most used and the least used stations on the network 
Well, I'm not including in Swalbrook Junction because that's not open all year round. That's only open on holidays for the steam railway. So I was thinking about what other stations might be the least used. Now here at Lake, which I always confuse with Sandown, I thought that that might be the least used because of how barren it is. It's just an empty platform. There's nothing here. One single platform down to Shanklin. It's not a massive town. But according to the latest figures, it turns out it isn't least used. The least used is actually here at Braiding. Now this was based on the latest statistics that I could find online, which is from the 2021-22 period. So things may well have changed. Braiding comes in a thousand below lake even though it's got the two platforms, even though it's got all this wide space, it's got all these historic features of the railway, and yet no one really seems to, well, use it as much as they do Lake, which is a single platform with just a wooden fence, seemingly in the middle of nowhere. The most used, of course, for that same year was Ride Esplanade, and that says a lot about the foot passengers who are coming across the island and using the railway. They tend to come on the hovercraft, get on a Ride Esplanade, and then travel onwards. Ride Esplanade, the most used, Braiding, the least used on the Isle of Wight. Now the other thing I want to do while I've got a bit of time here at Braiding, I'm going to do this throughout my series on branch lines, is to give it a bit of a score, to rank all of the branch lines that I travel on. And to do this, I've got my very handy orange book. It says on the front, the things that I was right about. So you can't debate me on this. What I say on it is fact. Now there's five categories that I'm going to rank every branch line on. And while we have a generic shot of me walking across braiding foot crossing, here's what the five categories are. Ride, the quality and comfort of the line. Views, how much there is to see. Popularity, how many people are using it. Opportunity, what opportunities there are surrounding the railway. And finally, Ben's overall rank, how much I love it. First of all, ride. Now, I'm really sorry. I don't mean ride as in R-Y-D-E. Like, does it have a ride station? I mean ride as in ride quality. Ride quality, it's got to be a three. It's actually been really poor, really bumpy. I'm not quite sure I like the new train, so it's going to get a three on that. For views, I've gone for a solid six. Like, there's not, there's not absolutely loads of views. There's no particular special sea views. But it is lovely English countryside and some of the old quaint railway features are also really beautiful. Some of the old tunnels, so uh, it's getting a 6 out of 10 for views. Coming up next we've got popularity. Now, with the popularity, I'm trying to consider what I've seen today. Like it's early March, it's quite cold still. I see loads of people using the line, more than I thought would be. I mean, I thought I'd be able to free uh, film sort of freely on the train, I'd have a train to myself, but I haven't been able to do that. There's people commuting on it as well. There was a lady just on the train when I got off who was asking about the replacement bus service tomorrow and how she was going to get to work. So people are clearly using it to commute. It's a brilliant line and it is it's still very popular regardless of the off season. I'm going to give it a seven. It's not been rammed, but it is quite busy busier than I was expecting, so it's getting a solid 7. The penultimate category I've got then is opportunity. I've given it a 7. It's not high score, uh, but it's mainly just sort of walks that you can go on. Obviously I had the walk on the abandoned stretch down towards uh, Roxall. Um, you can go on towards Vetna. Um, there's also the uh, Black Gang Chine, uh, the theme park, which is, I mean it's still a good 30 minute walk from Shanklin. But there are sort of Plenty of walks you can go on, plenty of times, to, opportunities to see the sea and do other things like that. I wouldn't say there's many opportunities beyond that, but I think the opportunities that do present themselves when you come on the island are good enough to warrant it a 7. And the final score then, Ben's overall rank. I've said it before already, I love the Isle of Wight. The Isle of Wight is one of my happy places. I'd love to come here as often as I could, and to be honest, I'll probably come back here again within this year, within 2024. Like this surely won't be the last time I come here this year even though I've got a lot of railways to tick off but um, I love the Isle of Wight it's gonna be a 9 out of 10 9 out of 10 it just makes me feel so happy like I love the weather even whether it be cold hot raining windy snowy I just love it it's just a feel-good place for me and it's got to be a 9 it's got to be a 9 so right then we gave it 3 
views we gave it six popularity we gave it seven opportunities of giving it seven Ben's rank is a total of nine so what's that all together 32 for the Isle of Wight as a branch line we'll see where that ranks among others when I visit them and as my train pulls in heading back towards Shankling we just have time to take a look at what that result has done to our branch line scoreboard since this is my first video in the series the Island Line takes top spot with a very respectable 32 points how will that compare to other branch lines? Make sure to tune in soon and find out. And with that, it was time to climb aboard for one last trip before heading home. time I've just watched the hovercraft arrive really hope you've enjoyed this video all about the island line please do like comment subscribe keep following the series I've been Ben Walker thank you for watching Damn, I need a piss.